Yes, you will smile again. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are joining me from. It's so great to be with you today. So welcome to my Pain Your Gain live chat. Today we are in for a great time because I have a great woman of God here that is loaded and is going to be a great blessing to you. So I want you to say hello to us in the chat. Tell us where you are joining us from. Let us know what is happening and what you are expecting from today's discussion. And as we talk along, wherever you feel you also have an experience you want to share, please, you are more than welcome to also put your experience in the chat. We also want to learn from you. So this live chat is a monthly program that we do where I bring in a guest and we talk about the topic I have for the month. And for this month, I've been speaking on thriving in adversity, thriving in adversity. Each time I think of this topic, it excites me because I just find that we can use adversity for our advantage. Before I get carried away and begin to go, <laughs> let me just introduce my guest. So I'm here today with, I say, the great woman of God. She's a coach, she's a teacher, she, she, she wears so many hats. So, she's, so her name is Lola Adeleye. Lola is the, the lead consultant for GBM Consultancy Limited. She's a highly sought after coach a trainer and a speaker with extensive experience of designing and delivering virtual through face-to-face -face leadership programs and workshops across private and public sectors. She loves helping individuals and teams to develop the ability to lead, to communicate and collaborate on a world-class level so that they can grow their individual and business results. She demonstrates a proven ability to deliver organizational improvements supporting strategic business objectives and streamlining procedures across organizations. Her commitment to facilitate leadership style has seen her build several productive and motivated teams. Lola is passionate and result-driven leadership consultant with a wealth of experience gathered generally within the UK and internationally with a trademark direct yet relatable style Lola shares in an engaging and high energy way practical steps to help individuals and teams discover and cultivate the seed of greatness within them through a growth transformation process, taking them from current state of success on to significance. And above all this, Lola is a follower of Jesus Christ. She's blessed with a loving husband and three wonderful children. Wow, Lola, it's so great to have you here with us today. So you are most welcome. Uh, thank you, Ayum. It's such a pleasure to, to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I can see Stella say, oh, hello, Lola. And you thank you so much, Stella, for joining us. Great to have you here. Yes, yeah, so we are all welcome. Please help us share this video. Invite people to join us because I know that we are in for a great time. Yes, I know, of course, this is recorded. People can watch it later, but there's nothing like being here live because when you are here live, you are also able to make your own contribution. So we know that we are in for a wonderful time. So Lola, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. It's nice and sunny here in this part yeah. of the world. Uh, so yeah, it's all good. Thank you. Oh, that is great. Yeah, each time I'm talking to people, maybe back in Africa, and I'm telling them, oh, we have sun today. They are, they are like wondering, what's the big deal about sun? Exactly. And I say, yeah. <laughs> sun is actually a very big deal for us. It's yeah. a so blessing. It's a real when we blessing. See the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> that is good. So thank you so much for making the time to be here. I know you are mm. a very busy person. So for you to be here is a sacrifice that you have made. And I know it's because of the heart you have to impact lives and to help people. That is why you made this time to be here. So once again, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. Even you yourself. I mean, when I, and I think about the fact that you do this repeatedly, consistently, every weekend, 
it's it's a lot so i want to thank you for sharing your platform with me and for inviting me to to partake of this blessing thank you uh, thank you so much you're welcome so what is one thing that you are most grateful for in this season ah uh, i'm grateful for life i'm grateful for for knowing the lord for having god on my side because to be honest yeah. i don't know where i would have been without god on my side so each day i wake up and i say thank you lord jesus for another beautiful day thank you for my family my friends yes thank you lord oh that's great yeah i think life is um the most important thing because without life there's nothing to <laughs> we don't have anything to be grateful for yeah, again because yeah you have life there's you can't be you can't complain you no. can't say i don't have this i don't have that if you don't have life in the first place yes yeah, so, yeah. yeah, life yeah. is one thing to be most grateful for yeah and That's for me beautiful. too i'm also grateful for the gift of life yeah. and this week um there were a couple of celebrations in my family which i'm very grateful for yeah my daughter that graduated from uni last year even though she graduated and she's already working she only, she only had her graduation ceremony this week, so uh, something uh, to be happy about. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, thank yeah, God. Because, Congratulations. Yeah, That's yeah, such a blessing. So mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Sister Josephine. Joining us from Abuja. God bless you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we just go in uh, straight to the topic for today, which is thriving in adversity. So, when you hear the word thrive and adversity, what comes to your mind, Yola? So the word thrive for me, when I hear thrive, it, it denotes flourishing. It denotes blossoming, you know, something that is working, something that is, yeah. And when I hear the word adversity, I, I think of pain, troubles, obstacles, challenges, um, difficulties. Yeah. So that, that's what those words connote to me. Yeah. 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 That is actually true. Yeah. Because, um, what I do is that every every month I have a topic for the month. And like I said, this, this month we're talking about thriving in adversity. Mm -hmm. And I've done some previous teachings. And I talked about like the meaning of thrive and adversity. And what you just said now, just confirm some of those things that um, I was saying. And by the way, if you're watching us and you've not watched those videos, I want to encourage you to just visit our Facebook page. Maybe that is where you're watching from right now or our YouTube channel and catch up on those videos because I know it's going to be a blessing to you. And while you are there, if you've not liked us on Facebook or subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so, so that anytime we come live like this or anytime we upload a new video, you'll be notified and you can watch and be blessed. Yes, yeah, so Lola have just told us now the meaning of thrive, the meaning of adversity. And for you watching, if you have any other thoughts, what does thrive mean to you? What does adversity mean to you? Put it in the chat. We also want to hear from you. Okay, Ochanya, thank you for joining us. Ochanya is joining us all the way from the from Red in United Kingdom here, yeah, which is great. God bless you. Yeah, so you've just told us this meaning now. So is it possible to thrive in adversity? Absolutely. I believe you can thrive in adversity. Yeah. I believe that, you know, John Maxwell, our coach and mentor, says, whatever you focus on expands. So when you're in a period of adversity, you can either focus on that adversity. So whatever challenge, because we said adversity is pain, trouble, challenge, obstacles, whatever. So when you're in a period of adversity, you can either focus on it or you can focus on something else. And when you focus on that adversity, so the pain, trouble, challenge, obstacle, it just continues to multiply. It gets bigger. Mm. Because we said whatever you focus on expands. So it, yeah. it becomes larger than real life. You know when they say larger than life? It becomes larger than real life. But one thing I've learned to do, mm. uh, I try my hardest to focus on gratitude. Mm. You know, because, okay, it's one thing to say it's possible to thrive in adversity. But then the next question will probably be, how would you, you know, mm. thrive mm. in adversity? Mm. And so for me, gratitude is my food. <laughs> mm. So... You know, during the pandemic, I think it, that was one thing that sort of helped me through every morning, writing down mm. three things I was grateful for. Mm. And I was focusing on that. I wasn't focusing on the news. I wasn't focusing on, you know, all the things that one was hearing around us. Because at that time, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of adversity. You know, listening to the things happening around one 
was creating a different sort of adversity. But then I chose, I actually chose that, okay, every day, God is still working. God is doing great things. In the midst of adversity, God is still working. So I chose every morning, what am I, what am I grateful for? My family is still here. My friends are still here. I'm breathing, right? So yeah, focusing on gratitude. Wow, that is powerful. Thank you so much for that. I really love that because when I think back to some seasons of adversity in my life, mm. I think focusing on gratitude have seen me through. Absolutely. But the, the, the funny thing there is that even then, I, I was not really conscious of the power of gratitude. Mm. But from what you have said now, and then from me now beginning to see how I pulled through that season, mm. I just realized that it was because I was focusing on gratitude. Absolutely. There was a season that like, there were so many things happening in my life. I didn't even know where to start or where to begin. And somehow I was just, I was taking each day, one day at a time. Mm. And at the end of the day, this song will always come to my mind. Thank you for, for the grace you've given me for mm. today. And I, I just find that I, I usually sing that song from the depth of my heart, just thanking mm. God that at least I made it to the end of the day. Yeah. And I just found that that was actually what saw me through. So mm. focusing on gratitude is very, mm. very important. Mm. Because I believe that for us to thrive, like you said, whatever you focus on expands. Mm. If you focus on problems, it will begin to just magnify and get bigger and get bigger. And then you see yourself like being lost in the problem. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, like a, yeah. it's almost like a, a ball of wool. You know, mm. when you see a cat, you know, in these videos, when they show a cat playing with a ball of wool, and mm. the cat is trying, is just turning around and around, and the wool is just going round and round the cat. That's mm. how it is. You know, when you focus on that, you just keep tying yourself up in knots, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but mm -hmm. I've learned that when mm -hmm. you're grateful for what you have, you're grateful for what you can see, you're grateful for what God is doing in your life. It just opens mm -hmm. the door for more blessings and the peace of Amen. God. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. And um, let me just come down a bit more personal now. Have you experienced adversity at all in your life <laughs> I, I i i think it's only the dead person even the dead people they must have experienced adversity before they died <laughs> okay. so, yes absolutely i have experienced okay. so do you want to share one or two experiences with us oh yeah definitely um i think i i don't know yeah i can sh definitely share um okay. one or two um the first one i would share is probably 2007 uh so about 15 years ago now when uh, i went to nigeria for my father-in-law's funeral and um on getting there you know my dad i hadn't seen my mom or dad for maybe about a year so i went straight to my parents house to say hello and all of them um the year before my dad had been ill and you know he was he was frail he was 84 um then so you know he was really frail but i thought okay i'm in lagos now first part of call see them and so i saw them and then i went to my family house so my husband's family house to start making the preparations because we were due to go to the village the following day to go and bury my father-in-law who passed two weeks before so yeah went did everything we needed to do the following day um we went to the mortuary to pick up the body and as we were going you know, we were just about to leave Lagos. The phone rang and uh, my husband picked up the phone. And as soon as he picked up the phone, actually before that, whilst we were getting ready in the house, um, the, the phone rang and it was my dad. And uh, we talked. I said, okay, I'll see you when I get back. He said, okay, no problem. Then he said, don't panic. I said, dad, I'm only going to Ubu States. I don't need to panic, okay? I'll see you when I get back. And I laughed over it and I gave the phone to my husband to, to speak with my dad. And um, yeah, and then we thought, okay, we've spoken with him. Everything is fine. Let's go. And um, yeah, as we were about to step out of Lagos, just, just about an hour later after that phone call, uh, another call came in on my husband's number and uh, as soon as he picked the call and he was talking in code I said guess what you don't need to talk in code please just tell me what happened because I just had a feeling mm -hmm. and he said oh you know dad's gone I said okay no problem and we were traveling in a convoy so we had to stop uh, and he informed he phoned his brother 
who was also in the convoy, the older brother. And so the older brother came to meet us and said, okay, what do we do now? Should, can I get someone to take you back to your parents whilst we go on, you know, as planned to the village and all of that? And I looked at them and I said, no, <laughs> we're already on our way to go and, you know, mm -hmm. um, offer our rights, you know, uh, pay our last rights to dad. They're both mm -hmm. my dads, you know, mm -hmm. they're both my dads. I cannot mm -hmm. leave one for another. So mm -hmm. let me go and do what I need to do for my dad. And then I'll go back a few days later as planned and go and do what I need to do for my other dad. They're both my dads. They're both gone now. If it was a case of, oh, mm -hmm. he's still alive and he wants to see me, then, okay, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. But right now, Let's do what we have to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we went. And we were in the village for about two, three days. And after that, you know, we then came back to Lagos and I went back to the family house. I saw my mom. I saw everybody. Yeah. So that in itself was a challenging period for me uh, because mm -hmm. now when I think back, it's like, how did I manage those three days yeah. in the hearing that news and not being able to go. But mm. I strongly believe it was the grace of God. You mm. know, the Bible tells us that he makes his strength perfect, even in our weaknesses. Yeah. And at that point in time, he says he will not allow us to go through what we cannot handle. So mm. he, the grace for that moment was already there for me. That's my belief. And wow. God gave me that grace for that mm. moment. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I can just only imagine the situation because this is you now that have come all the way from the UK to Nigeria to bury your father-in-law and your way and on your way to bury your father-in-law you hear that your dad dies and honestly thank God for the wisdom because the way you handled it was so matured and I can just imagine the way your in-laws will be endeared to you after that decision because for you to say that this, 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 both of them are my dad, let me finish this one and I'll go to the other one. I can only just imagine because any in-law that does that is not doesn't take herself as an in-law any longer. You took yourself like a child, a member of the family, and both Absolutely. of them were your dad. So thank God for that wisdom. Mm -hmm. That was really the wisdom of God. And mm -hmm. thank God for the grace that saw you through. Yeah. I'm just even wondering, how did you how did you manage, those, like you said, it was the grace of God, but I'm just like, how did you manage through those three days? How were you able to sleep? How did you carry yourself <laughs> through those three, three days? <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes eh, it's only when you look back that you start mm -hmm. to say, how did I go? You know, just like you're asking mm -hmm. me now, how yeah. did I go through that? Mm -hmm. Right? But that's the, that, it, 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 that's grace. That's that's mm. what grace is about. You know, yes. when the Bible says in Psalm 23, goodness and mercy will follow mm. you. That mm. was goodness. That was mercy. That mm. was not me. That was God. Mm. Mm. That was God. That it's was, you, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our helper. Mm. So the Holy mm. Spirit that we all carry inside of us came mm. through for me that time. That's all I can say. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Mm. Stella is saying God's grace is available to us in our time of need. Absolutely. And that is absolutely true. It is. Mm. Yeah. In my book, when I was talking about grace, one of the meanings of grace that I defined in my book is that grace is divine enablement. Absolutely. And I've seen like grace, like you said, when I begin to think back on seasons in my life, when I've gone through some tough uh, challenges, I remember one time when I had my daughter, Grace, and then she was very young then she needed to be uh, she was um, she was prone to a lot of chest infections mm. so she has chest infection on this occasion and they were taken to the hospital and then she was on admission because they were using nebulizer on her mm. and you know of course when your child is in the hospital you are also in the hospital as well Absolutely. You sleeping and all that and th the following day like uh, what, um maybe i can't remember which day we got we got there now but like there was the day after was a sunday and at this point, I was supposed to be preaching in church that Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, I have not slept for like a few days now. I was exhausted. I was mm -hmm. mentally, physically, I was tired. Mm -hmm. And I called like a member of the church to just come and pick me from the hospital. She picked me, took me home. I just freshened up. I came for the mm -hmm. service. I still ministered in the service. Everything still went so well to the mm -hmm. glory of God. Amen. And then when I begin to look back now at some of those seasons, I just wonder, how did I pull through? Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, so it's, it's only the grace of God. So the grace is. is available to us mm -hmm. if 
we tap into it. So thank yes. God for mm. that, 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 how God saw you through that mm. season of adversity mm. and how you were able to pull through. And I was just wondering, when you went back to your family house, how did you now handle the issue of your father? Did you have to, was he buried during that season or did you have to travel? I mean, come back to the UK and go back again. How did that play? Oh, yes. You know, you know how it is here in the UK. It's only how many days permission you take permission from work that you can get so and again because most of my dad's um siblings are in the are in the states and all of that so we had to coordinate another date for the funeral so definitely we went back <laughs> we we went back and came back i think it was a month later for the funeral yeah wow wow and so when you look back when you look yeah, back they, during this season yeah okay sorry you're saying something finish that. yeah i said so basically they died within two weeks of each other yeah wow Wow. Thank God for his grace, just like we have said. Yeah. But like when you um when you look back at the way things happen, is there anything that you that, that you are grateful for? Even oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what you say you were for so that? again, we're talking about gratitude, right? Through okay, we, yeah. when you what you focus on. At that mm. point in time, I was just so grateful that mm. I had the opportunity to sit with him, to talk with him the night before. Mm. I thank God that when he phoned that morning, I, mm. I picked up the call because I may have been doing other things and not picked up the call. Mm. And then find out later that he had tried to call me and I wasn't available. Mm. I, you know, those last words mm. that he spoke to me on the phone, I can never mm. forget. Mm. And you know, the most interesting thing was that he spoke to me more on the phone than when I saw him physically the night before. So honestly, I'm just so grateful. I'm just really grateful. Yeah. And that reminds me of the scripture where the Bible says that all things work together for good for those who love God. Because maybe the devil will be thinking, okay, I took both her fathers within two weeks. But at the end of the day, I just look at it like you said now. You, you don't live in Nigeria. So for you to have gone to Nigeria, spent time with him, seen him, mm -hmm. and then even chat with him just before he passed, mm -hmm. that was that was a great thing to be grateful for because yeah, was I just blessing. imagine that, okay, if you didn't come to Nigeria for your father-in-law's funeral, you wouldn't have had a chance to no. see your dad and just right. have that conversation with him. Mm -hmm. So in everything, we can still find what to be grateful for. So for you that is watching us, I don't know the adversity that you are going through right now, but I want you to begin to look Look closely at what you are experiencing. Yeah. Look within yourself. What can I still be grateful for in this situation? Mm. What can I still be grateful for? And I can tell you that when you begin to look intently, mm. you'll find that there's something to be grateful for. And when mm. you begin to focus on that thing, you just find that because you are grateful, it begins to expand and the blessings begin to come. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's hear the second one now because I'm, I'm very eager to hear the second thing that, uh, <laughs> that, you, that okay. you want to share. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me see. Let me let me let me share another one. So this one is a bit closer to home. It happened here in the UK. Okay. Um, so a few years ago, uh, I used to work for one of the top um, top four financial institutions here in the UK, and um, the job I was doing was a bit projecty, a bit salesy. And so we had targets. So for example, just to make it a, a bit plain, you know, they would say, um, if you sell, if you sell 10 products, um, you know, so say for example, you sell 10 products, you have to sell 10 products and you have to make X amount, you know, from the sales. So say for example, they told me I had to make 200,000 pounds from the sales for the company. In my mind, that was 200,000 divided by 10 because I needed to make 10 sales. So I was looking for values of anything from 20,000 onwards so that I could do 10 and I could make my 200,000, right? So I was doing that and I was doing it successfully, right? I had kids, uh, my oldest at that time was um, nine years old right? Mm -hmm. So I had a child that was nine, I had one that was five, and I had one that was uh, three, right? And I was working mm -hmm. in central London. And um, yeah, so I was giving it my all. <laughs> I was giving it my all, sometimes taking work home just to make sure I was hitting those targets. So at the end of the year, fast forward to the end of the year, um, it was time for appraisal. And as you know, 
appraisal is a time where they will tell you, you know, what have you done? How good have you been? Rate yourself. I'm an African mm -hmm. woman. African proverb tells us that if nobody praises mm -hmm. me, I will praise myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when they said I should rate myself, I rated mm -hmm. myself the topmost mark because as far as I was concerned, I, I was mm -hmm. hitting my goals, you know. Yeah. So the day came for the appraiser with my manager. We went to the room. He came in. He said, oh, how, how are you? How has it been? How did you rate yourself? I said, ah, mm -hmm. I, I rated myself AO because, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think I deserve it. And he yeah. goes, <laughs> he looked at mm. me, oh, and he said, mm. Mm. yes, um, mm. you've definitely been working hard, but I wouldn't rate you an A. You know, he said, wow. that hard that you say you've been working is actually the problem. Mm. Well, like, you've been working hard, but you haven't been working smart. And mm. I thought, excuse me, what's it what? <laughs> What is this man talking mm. about? I'm working hard. I'm not working smart. You know, mm. different thoughts started going through my head. What does he mean? How, how mm. dare he talk to me like that? Boo, 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 boo. Mm. You know, oh, you know, it was almost as if somebody pulled my heart out because that was not <laughs> what I was expecting at all. Mm. Because I already mm. calculated my bonus. I already calculated, you know, <laughs> the increase in salary. <laughs> that, that was due to me. I already even spent it probably, you know. <laughs> so when he said all of that he said you know he could see that i, I was aggravated and he mm -hmm. said well i'll leave you to think about it and if you like mm -hmm. you can discuss with some of your colleagues to see how you know mm -hmm. they are doing things and they are getting the bonuses and promotion and mm -hmm. you know find out what you're doing wrong mm -hmm. so he left so it took a few minutes i composed myself and i went back to the office where everybody was waiting everybody was like ah yes this girl she must have gotten the biggest bonus uh, so they were asking mm -hmm. me i said ah, i didn't get anything no mm -hmm. <laughs> they were like it's a lie it's not possible i said it's possible i didn't get anything you know mm -hmm. and so one of my colleagues was like that is so wrong you can't allow mm -hmm. that to happen lola that mm -hmm. is racism I can tell you for sure, I mean, this is racism. And you know, mm. this was a white lady telling me that. So mm. I, I was thinking, okay, could it be? Am I being picked on? What have you, what have you? And she said, look, you need to report this to the union. The head of the, 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 the chairperson of the union is a very good friend of mine. I can refer you, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Everything was just coming from different directions. And I said mm -hmm. to her, I said, thank you so, so very much. In mm -hmm. fact, before I could say anything, she had sent the email to the union lead. <laughs> and I said, okay. I said, okay, I need to go home. I need to think over this, pray over it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Let me, we'll talk about this in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just went home. I prayed about it. In fact, in fact, some of my family members were, enough is enough now. I think you need to resign, you know. Mm -hmm. But after praying and, you know, passing it through my spirit filter and all of that, I just felt that God was telling me, no, this is not the time for you to resign. You need to stay there. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Stay there? All this humiliation? How can mm -hmm. I stay there? God said, stay there. I'm building patience. Mm -hmm. I said, patience? Are you telling me that I don't have enough patience? I'm patient. Everybody say I'm patient. How much more patient do I need to be, you know? Mm. So anyway, when the Lord has spoken, you have to mm. obey. So I stayed yeah. and I just said, God, okay, show mm. me what is this thing that everybody else is doing that I'm not doing? Mm. And interestingly, when you ask God, he will answer. He will show you. And he showed me that <laughs> where I was, say, 10 for 200, People were not even worried about that 10 count. They were mm. only worried about that 200, mm. right? So if they could do one for 200, mm. of course, me, I was slaving away over 10 for 200. If they did one, they were working smart because they were hitting the 200,000 and even exceeding mm. because if they did 200 times 10, mm. that's 2 million. I mean, oh, while wow. I'm doing 200, 200, 10, 10, 10 <laughs> Jesus. The moment mm -hmm. I noticed that that was the way to success, I said, thank mm -hmm. you, Jesus. I can do this. I can definitely do this. So mm -hmm. I started to walk back on the process and I said, okay, there are, there's this group of people that book our appointments for us. I spoke with them. I made friends with them, you know, whatever I needed to do. I started communicating and connecting, you know, mm -hmm. with different people with the within the team, the key players. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I started making sure that the appointments that were booked for me 
with the key appointments that were so i didn't need to do 10 appointments again every mm -hmm. week I was just doing it before or five because it's the same energy that you spend on a 10,000 appointment that you're going to spend on a 2 million appointment. Wow. <laughs> yes. So interestingly, as God will have it that year, mm -hmm. I won so many awards. Uh, wow. I have every quarter. In fact, I was getting employee of the week, employee of the quarter, employee wow. of the week, employee of the quarter, to the point that, um, you know, I won this award where I went for a weekend away uh, with a cooking a, a cooking class with Marco Pierre White, one of the Michelin starred um, chefs in the UK. Um, so, yeah, it was fantastic. And that is just by, you know, introspecting, reflecting, seeking God. And God, what do you have for me in this? And I can tell you, um, it has served me well, and I refer to it a lot, you know, in my trainings and all of that. And it has helped of that people to work through some of the situations that they've had in their organizations or in their offices. Because the Bible tells us that the mm -hmm. comfort that you receive, comfort mm -hmm. other people with it. That's, true. That's why we go through adversity, so mm -hmm. that the lessons we learn, we mm -hmm. can teach other people. Wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. And I like the story you have shared because it's very relatable, especially when you are an immigrant. Yeah. It's so easy for us to just boil everything down to racism. Absolutely. When you do something, especially when you know that you have worked hard and you don't get the result you want, then the next conclusion now is that it, uh, they are being racist. It's racism. <laughs> and yeah, like you said, this is a white woman, even like <laughs> telling you this is racist, it's not, your, it's not a fellow black person. So it's very easy to believe it. But I thank God for that power of questioning. Because mm -hmm. when you went to God and you got to ask, should I go? People are, everybody's telling me I have a case left. Should I go? And God, even your family said, you, it, it's enough. You can leave now. So you had the backup of everybody. Yeah. But I'm so grateful that you are a woman of God that you took it to God in prayer. You didn't make a rash decision. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the situation that was supposed to be for humiliation. God turned it around. Absolutely. And now became, you became the celebrated employee. So congratulations Absolutely. on that. Yeah. That is Thank powerful. You. And I want everyone to learn from me because when she said, working, you are working hard, but you're not working smart. I, I began to ask myself, which area am I working hard and not working smart? I think that is, that, that is a take home point for me now to really begin to evaluate the areas that I'm working hard, I'm not working smart. Because at the end of the day, Whatever adversity that we go through is a training for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that you took that challenge and you decide to better yourself instead of letting it to just discourage you and you move from that job and all that. Yeah, so that is powerful. That is powerful. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. So what, um, what, what lessons do you learn? Did you learn from that experience? Uh, several, actually. So like I said, I learned that the voice of the people is not necessarily the voice of God. Mm. You know, people say that the voice of the people is the voice of God, mm. right? But it's not always true. That That's was one true. key lesson I learned, mm. that a lot of people might be saying a lot of things, but what is God saying to you, you, you yourself? Mm. Mm. Our journeys are different. God takes mm. us on different paths, right? Mm. The, the journey that David went through is different from the journey that Joseph went through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everybody has their own journey and mm. so stay on your own lane mm. and for me if like you said you know even though family and everybody was saying this that 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 mm. i always try to in whatever situation i am in irrespective mm. of what everybody is saying it's about mm. for me it's always about what is god saying to me personally mm. because mm. the way i look at it is i'm answerable to god mm. I'm answerable to God because I cannot complain to God if I'm not doing what God tells me to do. Mm. But if That's I believe great. I'm in the center of his will, then I, mm. I have every right to go to him and say, God, no, 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 no. This is not working. Help me here. And with mm. utmost faith, I know that he will help me in that situation. But if mm. my actions are mm. people-led, then mm. for me, I won't be able, I won't have that boldness to go to God mm. because mm. I know that I was obeying man instead of obeying God. Absolutely. So the, yeah. So the lessons I've learned there mm. are that number one, 
again, mm. again, I need to seek God in whatever situation I find myself. Mm -hmm. What is God saying about it? And be mm. obedient to whatever mm. God is telling me. Mm. Right? It's, a, it's about a dependency on the Holy Spirit. What is the Spirit of God saying to us? Mm -hmm. And allowing that Spirit of God to lead us in every situation. Yeah. That is great. That is great. Yeah. One of the things I said, like when I was talking about how to thrive in adversity during um, the teaching I did maybe a week or two ago, one of the things I, I talked about was going to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. And of course, going, what you did was going to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. And prayer can be talking to God. Prayer can be questioning God. So it's, it's, in prayers, it's not just about you. Maybe just come to talk alone and you leave. It's about you also asking questions. You can tell God how you feel. You can ask him for comfort. And then, of, of course, you can also ask him, what is the way forward? What should I do? Mm -hmm. Everybody is saying, do this, but is that what you are telling me to do? Mm -hmm. And just like you said, the voice of the people is not necessarily the voice of God. And one of the, one of the things that led me to be doing what I'm doing right now was um, many years ago when I had my daughter, Grace, and it looked like the world around me had crumbled mm -hmm. because I just found myself, my business had to stop, everything had to stop. She needed a full-time attention. And the way the situation is, I didn't even know whether she was going to live or die because the doctor mm -hmm. that we met then was not even sure whether she was going to live up to, up to two weeks. So mm -hmm. it was a very trying period in my life. And I began to, one day I just went to God in prayer, I was crying, I was just asking God, God, what... What is my life all about? Is this how my life is going to end? What's mm -hmm. the future for this child? What would you have me do? And I prayed that day. I cried. Then I went about my activities. And two days later, while I was praying again, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and say, why don't you make your pain someone else's gain? Mm -hmm. And it was like a light bulb moment for me. I say, wow, mm -hmm. you mean my pain can become somebody else's gain? Mm. And that was just how this ministry started, by mm. paying your gain. So that is just what I heard. And, mm. and from what, when I began to do it, when people begin to come to me with testimonies, oh, yeah, you, 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 you inspired me, your story helped me, it made me to do this. And I was like, wow, so this is actually a, a pain. I mean, a, a gain coming out of pain. Mm. Mm. And of course, the, the action you took as well was a way of turning your pain into gain. Absolutely. Anybody that hear this story now will also be blessed. So I'm just encouraging everyone that is watching us that when you are going through your adversity, or right now you may be going through an adversity, we talk about the power of gratitude. The next thing we're talking about now is the power of questioning. Ask God questions. Don't just take what anybody says to you. Because one thing I know is that when you are going through trouble, everybody has an opinion. Absolutely. Everybody will come with their various opinions. Oh, why don't you do this? If I were you, this is what I would do. This, this person did this and this is what they got. Why are you still here? So people will be saying all manner of things. But you need to hear God for yourself. Mm. You need to hear God for yourself. And the good thing is that God still speaks to us. Yes. He speaks to us in different ways. And I know that he will speak to you in a way that you understand. So take your question to God if you have any question right now or if you are not sure what to do mm. about the situation that you are in. And I can guarantee you that he will speak to you. He will show you the way out. Mm. So another thing I want to ask you, Lola, is that um, what, how do you see like a support system when we are going through adversity? What, um, is, 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 it, is it helpful in any way to have a support system? What is the, well, and if it is, what are the benefits of a support system? If you can just start, speak a bit into that. Yeah. I mean, in life, I, I always say one thing. I say, no man is an island. Mm -hmm. You know? There's no way you can be successful. Mm -hmm. Talk less of significance by yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you that I had kids that were young at that time. Mm -hmm. So definitely the support system that enabled me to win all those awards mm -hmm. were number one. You know, my mom came down at some point to help me take care of my kids. So that was a fantastic support system for me because I didn't even yeah. need to worry because mm -hmm. it was my mom taking care of my kids. Mm -hmm. At some point as well, I also had the nursery, you know, that I would drop the kids in the morning, pick them up in the evening. That in itself was a support system. Mm -hmm. My husband, if my husband did not believe in the God that I serve, mm -hmm. if he did not believe that I'm a woman of God, mm -hmm. he would have... He, he might have destroyed our marriage because he'll be like, but I, I'm telling you to leave. Mm. But I said, no, this is what God is saying to me. Mm. So having a, an understanding husband and on this, a, a mm. husband that believes mm. 
that you you know you know your god mm. uh -huh. and allow you to serve your god mm. is key as well you yeah. know so a support system you know it says together each mm. person achieves more mm. surrounding yourself with people that believe in god people mm. that will encourage you for example people in my church my fellowship you know i have prayer partners i have accountability mm. partners uh, you know all those people you share your pain with them and they mm. pray for you they lift it up to god for you you mm. know the prayer partners mm. are very important mm. yeah mm. yeah thank you so much for that and that reminded me of the story in the bible when um the israelites were fighting in a war and moses had to hold his hand up and yeah. at a point when he was getting tired yeah. Because when he when his hands were up, the Israelites were winning. But when the yeah. hands come down, they begin to defeat them. And yeah. at a point, God had to bring uh, Aaron and Hor to come and hold up his hands. Absolutely. And that is the power of a support system. Because I Absolutely. just discovered that, just like you said, no man is an island. Mm. And our mentor, John Maxwell, we always say that um, one is too small in number to achieve success. To achieve greatness. Yeah. yeah. To achieve greatness. Yes. Yeah. So you just find that um, we need we need support. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is that um, in a time of adversity, it's very easy to isolate. Yeah. Because when you are going through that difficult time, if, you, if it's like nobody understands me, you know, mm -hmm. we have a way of also specializing our problems. <laughs> it's like this is a special problem. <laughs> you don't know what I'm going through. Yeah. So we are not commonizing your problem now because, of course, we know that yeah, every problem that we go through is, is a tough one. But let's also, like, try to also, like... Um, drop this habit of specializing a problem as if this is a very special problem it's peculiar to me nobody has gone through this nobody understands me and because of that you want to isolate yourself and then i also discovered that there are some adversities that we go through that is associated with shame mm. we, we feel ashamed of what we are going through mm. because maybe somebody is doing so well and all of a sudden your business crumbles mm. and then you that people used to know you to be so well off and all that now you cannot even afford to feed and it's shameful. You don't want to beg and all that. So there are so many things that we go through that can create shame. And mm -hmm. because of that, we want to hide. We want to isolate ourselves. But one thing I've come to discover is that for us to thrive in adversity, we need to, 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 to just break out of that isolation. Mm -hmm. Don't break out. Don't, don't hide when, when you are going through things. You may think nobody understands. You may think your own problem is the biggest or it's a special one, but you sometimes mm. you need to even hear people. Sometimes you come mm. with somebody to tell somebody your problem, but by the time they tell you that, you say, Ah, my own is small, <laughs> don't worry, I'm okay. <laughs> because you now realize that people are going through things. So when you begin to have that support system, it helps you to thrive. It helps mm. you when, when you feel discouraged, they encourage you. When you feel tired, they empower you. When your hand is going down, they can hold it up for you, and then you can see yourself just thriving. So let's always go for support. And sometimes, even when you feel people don't understand you, maybe you need to explain to them. Sometimes you need to ask for this help because you may, you may think that somebody may know that, somebody should know that they should support you, but sometimes people don't know and they need to be asked. So don't feel awkward to ask when you need to ask because I believe a support system will help you to thrive when you are going through your adversity. All right, so... There is this quote, which has been my favorite throughout this month when I've been speaking on this subject, that adversity causes some men to break while it causes others to break record. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I agree with that. You know, as we said at the beginning, what you mm. focus on expands. Mm. You know, I believe that adversity can make you or it can break you. Mm. Right? So... For example, the story I said before mm. about when I was, you know, working and all of that. At that point in time, mm. I believe that, like you said, it could be, adversity could be a stepping stone to glory. Yeah. Or it yeah. could be a tripping stone. Mm. <laughs> it could trip you. Wow. Yeah, wow. it could trip you or it mm. can leap you. Mm. Yeah, it can be a leap into greatness or it can trip you. Well, that's a quote now. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to borrow that your quote and use it this week. <laughs> that's yes, powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. It can trip you or it can make you, you know, leap into greatness. And so mm. it's a choice. Mm. When you face adversity, it's about your attitude. Mm. What's it going to be? Mm. Anything in this life is a choice. Mm. 
Yeah. You can either choose for it to make you mm. or you can choose for it to break you. Mm. Like you said in your quote, adversity causes some men to break and mm. others to break records. Mm. And that example that I shared with you was a perfect example for that. Yeah. I broke records that I never imagined mm. I was ever going to break. Mm. Mm. I didn't see it. I didn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't something I visualized. Mm. But at that point in time, I said to myself, this thing is not going to define me. Mm. This is how this is not how I'm going to be remembered in this organization. Mm. I'm not going to be remembered as the one that took everybody to the union. No. Mm. Right? And the more I learned the job, the more I learned, filled the gaps because there were gaps in my learning. That's what it meant. Mm. Mm. Right? But a lot of us don't want to shine the light on ourselves. Mm. We don't want to think that maybe we're doing something wrong, mm. right? But you have yeah. to introspect. You have to check yourself. Mm. Where am I missing it? Mm. What am I doing wrong? Father God, show me. Mm. And the moment you're being shown, then you start mm. making those amendments, start changing. And people yeah. will see. And they will acknowledge it. Mm. And that, that, that was the situation. So I went from somebody that did not receive bonus or increase in that year. Mm -hmm. The following year, when I went for my appraiser, the same boss, he said, so how do you think you did? I said to him, you tell me. Because now, it wasn't for me to prove anything to him. It was obvious. Yeah. With mm -hmm. all the awards and everything, the medals mm -hmm. I had, it wasn't for me to prove it. You tell me how you think I did. He said, mm -hmm. without a shadow of a doubt, you know, you smashed it. Wow. <laughs> not, on, not only did i receive a bonus i received mm. a bonus that equated to my one year salary wow yes <laughs> yes i did that is powerful and then i received a salary increase as well mm. so wow. it is possible you know um john maxwell says one thing he says there's always more than one option mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's always more than one option so in mm -hmm. that circumstance I could have said, oh, union was the only option for me. Mm. But I needed to look at what other options are there. Mm. Can I turn this around? And mm. how can I turn it around if there's a possibility that I can turn it around? Mm. So, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that question. How can I turn it around? Because that is actually the secret of breaking record when you are going through adversity. Yeah. Because like you said, that quote that I just mentioned said, adversity causes some men to break, while others, it causes them to break record. And the example you gave now, thank God for that example, is a perfect one because you that was almost breaking. Because if you took them to the union, I can just imagine the amount of time, the effort you, you will put into fighting. And who even know whether you will win at the end of the day. But rather than put that effort and energy into that fighting, you now put it, in, in working smarter and at the end of the day you broke records now your bonus alone was more than a one year salary that is great that is powerful so well done for that and that is inspiring for those of us listening to you right now because whatever adversity you are, that you are going through you when you begin to look inward when you begin to ask questions when you begin to determine how can i make lemonade out of this lemon that has been <laughs> that has been given to me then you just find that you actually begin to break records you actually begin to break record because you will now realize that there is always something good. There's always an advantage in every adversity. Absolutely. There's always an advantage in every, every adversity. And just like you said, adversity can be a stepping stone or it can be a tripping stone. Yeah. So it can break you. It can make you. The choice is yours. So no matter how difficult it is, just like you said when we, when, when we at the beginning of this, of this talk, which is a quote you made from the Bible, that God says there's no, he will not bring anything our way that is more than we can bear. Mm -hmm. So when adversity comes your way, it's because God knows that you can bear it. Absolutely. And I also know that adversity is a way of building us up. Mm -hmm. a, a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to a man of God. And he said, people usually ask him, does he have any problem at all? And then he said, maybe the problems came, but I didn't know. <laughs> and then he began to talk, to, uh, talk about some of the challenges that they've been through when the ministry was growing and all that. And then he said that but he doesn't look at it as problems because 
The Bible says that we are soldiers of Christ. Mm. And you know that when you enroll in the military, you are going to be drilled. You are going to Absolutely. go through tough training. Yeah. And then he says, as, as a soldier, when you enroll and you are going through that training, will you not, go, will you not step aside and start crying and say, ah, they're suffering <laughs> too much. They are suffering me. They are suffering me. He said, that is part of your training. Yeah. It's part of the drilling you need to go through to become the strong soldier. So at the end of the day, when I look at it, even though he was saying it very humorously, but there were a lot of lessons there. And then I began to just think back that the adversities of life is what builds us up. Mm. If I think of myself in areas that I have become strong today, it's because I went through adversities in those mm. areas. Mm. Because you find that if you don't go through adversity, you don't have strength. Mm-hmm. You don't have experience. When you are talking, people will not even listen to you because they say this one doesn't know what she's talking about. But when you've been through it and you talk, people will now listen to you because they know that, yes, you actually know yeah. what you are talking about because you've been through it and you have come out strong. And that mm-hmm. is my prayer for everyone that is watching us right now. That whatever mm-hmm. adversity that you are going through, mm-hmm. it will make you to break records. It will not Amen. break you, Jesus. Amen. Name. It Amen. will be a stepping stone, like Lola said. It will not Amen. be a tripping stone in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Time goes very fast. So our time is actually quite, uh, it's, our time is fast gone now. So as we round up now, I just want to add, uh, what will, I just want to maybe give, give you opportunity to speak to our viewers. What will be your final words to our viewers? People watching us right now, what do you want them? I know you've spoken a lot. There are a lot of take-homes. I've learned a lot listening to you today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, you. I mean, as you, when we started, you know, you said, have I been through adversity? Mm-hmm. <laughs> adversity in life is a given, right? Mm-hmm. No one can escape that. Whatever you call it, adversity, challenges, trials, obstacles, hurdles, whatever name you want to give it, no one's going to escape it. And, you know, like you said, there is nothing new under the sun. That's what the Bible tells us. There's absolutely, there's no special adversity for you. Mm-hmm. Somebody somewhere would have gone through it before. Mm-hmm. But we, we want to own our pain. We want to own it and label it and say, this is mine. But mm-hmm. think about it. Of what usefulness is that? Isn't it better when they say a problem shared is a problem half solved already? Mm-hmm. Right? So trying to own it is trying to say it cannot be solved. But when you share it, they say a problem shared is a problem half solved. The first person mm-hmm. you need to go to is God. Mm. Ask God. Mm. Share it with God. Seek counsel from God. Mm. You know, God, what are you saying to me in this situation? Mm. Don't own it. Give it to God. Because what does the Bible say? It says, cast all your cares, your worries, your anxieties onto me. Mm. It says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Mm. So you don't have to bear that burden. You don't have to carry your pain. You can give it to God, lay it at his feet and let the king of peace fill you with his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Um, Ochoa is saying in the the, um, chat here, she said, a bonus equating a whole year worth of salary. I received that to my, say me, I touch the hem of your garment. (laughs) You can't touch the hem of Jesus' garment. (laughs) Just like when I read the last introduction, she's a coach, she's a leadership coach. She she, she can coach in every area of your life. So the way you can touch the hem of your garment is to contact her. And then she'll be able to mentor you. She'll be able to coach you so that you also can begin to get those amazing results. Absolutely. So yeah, Joy is saying, oh, there's always an advantage in any adversity. And that is true. There's always an advantage in every adversity. Mm -hmm. One thing I also said during my teaching during um, last week or or so is that um, God does not allow us to suffer for nothing. He said, I've not called the children of Israel to serve me in vain. And of course, so, so each time we, 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 God allows us to go through an experience, it's because he's working out something in us. Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's going to turn out for our good, just like the yeah. Bible says. So yeah. there's always an advantage in yeah. every adversity. Yeah. But when you get consumed with the pain, which yeah. I usually look at as a temporary situation, because that yeah. pain will come and it will go. Yeah. When you get consumed with that pain, You will not see the big picture of what God is trying to do in your life. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are speaking on thriving now. So the way you thrive, we talk about gratitude. We talk about the the, the, the power of going to God in questions, having Mm -hmm. the right attitude, and many others that we've talked about. So I believe this video 
this is recorded, so you can always go back and watch this again. And I believe there will be so much for you to learn. So once again, Lola, thank you so much for making our time um, to be here. Thank you. I, I enjoyed I this I chat. That, yeah. <laughs> I know that um, yeah, you, you've come to point to us today. You've put on your coach hat. You put on a mother's hat as well, advising us and giving us those tips. So but at least for people that are married now, some people, the way they treat their father-in-law is different from the way they treat their own father. So she has given us that wisdom. If you want to like win yourself into your in-laws' heart, you know what to do now. So take both parents as the same. A lot have been said here today, so I can't thank you enough. And for those of you that have joined us today live, I want to really appreciate you. Thank you so much for making thank out you. the time to be here with us because we know that it's busy. There is so much happening here today. Lola and myself, we've been out today doing doing one or two <laughs> things before we ran to be here to, for this uh, program. So I know that everybody is busy. So for you to be here with us, we know that, yes, it's because you value what we are doing. So God bless you all. And I'm just going to give Lola a chance to just pray for everyone that is watching, especially for anyone that is going through any form of adversity right now. I want you to pray for them. Amen. Uh, before I do, I just want to say thank you to my accountability partner, Stella. Thank you for joining. And thank you to every other person that has joined. God bless you all. And so, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to share with one another. We thank you, Father, because your word says that you, you give us a comfort. You comfort us with one comfort that we can use to comfort other people. And that is why we are here, because we have come through on the other side of those adversities, of those challenges, of those obstacles. You have given us the testimony. And so, Father God, even as we are sharing today, my sister, you and I, I pray for every other person that is listening to us right now, whether live or in the recorded sessions. Father, you know your children. The Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so, Father God, we are your sheep. You are the shepherd. And so, Father, you know what each person is passing through. Nothing escapes you. And so, Father, we pray that you whisper. You whisper. And you anoint ears to hear you as you whisper solutions to them, to their adversities right now in the name of Jesus. Father, let them... Let each one of us focus on you and focus yeah. on you so that we can hear you, so that we can receive of you the direction, yeah. Father, so that our stories can be changed for your glory in Jesus' amen. name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much once again. God bless Thank you. you. And please, if you know anybody you. that this video will be a blessing to, feel free to share it with them. And we'll see you again next time for another session of my Pain Your Gain Life chat. So continue to be blessed and God bless you. Are you going through a traumatic experience? Does all hope seem lost? Are you looking for a way out? Then these books are for you. Mama Grace. He gave me comfort. Through the storm. All by Ayum Ejiga. These books are available in paperbacks, Kindle versions, and audiobooks on all Amazon websites worldwide and other online bookstores. You can also find the audiobooks on Audible and iTunes. So take heart. These books will show you the way out of trauma to triumph. And you will have the last laugh.